Hi everyone, so I get a lot of questions about um, Paint Tool Sai because it's the program that I used to draw in and I wanted to kind of go completely through everything, well mostly everything in the whole program, the basics, so hopefully you'll be able to look, to use this program efficiently after watching this video. So as you can see, everything's really small on my screen because I have a high resolution and um, this is the way I like to, to use it the best because I have a lot of drawing area. Um, I, I'm using a Cintiq Companion 2, but you don't need a tablet like this. I just wanted it for the portability. Um, you can use whatever tablet you have. You can make art with any tablet or even a mouse. Whatever you're using, it's fine. So here is what Paint Sai looks like. So the first thing you want to do, if, if you want to draw on something, go to File, New. And then this little window will pop up. And there's presets. So you can do A4 and all these other random sizes. I'm just going to go with A4 for now, 350 PPI. You want your resolution to be at least 300 if you ever plan on printing things. Um, you want to make a really large canvas with 300 DPI or 600 DPI. Try to make it as big as you can without your computer so that your computer can still run. That way it gives you a lot of options for printing sizes if you, if you want to do a painting. If you ever want to make prints of a uh, piece of artwork, it's always good to have it in a, in a large size. But 300 resolution is pretty good. I usually work in A3 size, but I'm just going to do A4 for the sake of this. You can name it if you want, but you can name it when you save it later so you don't have to name it now. And once you have it all in there, press OK. And this white area is your canvas, and you can draw on it like this. I wanted to give you some keyboard shortcuts that I use all the time, just really basic ones. So say you make a line. You're trying to draw a circle and then it messes up. So you press Control Z and that is undo. Control Z, Control Z, whatever country you're from, I say Control Z and it un undoes what you did. And you can undo a lot in Paint Tool Sai, um, but there is a limit after a while, so just keep that in mind. Th there's no history in Paint Tool Sai like Photoshop, but you can undo a lot, but there is a limit. I've reached a limit before. Also, Control S is a good way of saving your work as you go. I always have Control S on my express keys or you can just use your keyboard to press Control S and that saves it. And um, another keyboard shortcut are the, the square brackets. See how my brush is getting bigger and it gets smaller. So the, the square brackets make your brush go up in size and down in size, which I use a lot. I have it programmed on my express key so you can draw, make it bigger, make it smaller. I also wanted to talk about the stabilizer because this is a really good feature in Paint Tool Sai because when you have it at zero, it's a lot harder to make straight lines. But say you set the stabilizer higher, then you can make really smooth lines. But the higher you set it, basically what the stabilizer does is it makes it, it, makes it delay a little bit so that as you draw, your pen is, is a little bit ahead of your actual paintbrush so you can kind of control it better. It gives you like time to see where it's going and it sounds like it like it makes it horrible to draw but it actually makes it amazing to do line art and to control your lines better because drawing with zero stabilizer it's hard to make really smooth lines. My tablet has a little bit of a of a delay. I don't know why it does but um, that kind of smooths my lines anyway. I think it's because it's a display tablet. I'm not sure. I don't know why. I just realized this recently. So the stabilizer is good. You want to have it high enough so that your lines are as smooth as you want them to be, but you don't want it to be so high that it takes away from your drawing experience and makes it too hard to draw. Okay, so now I wanted to talk about how to set up your workstation. Your paint tool side probably comes like this, but I like to put my layers on the other side. So what I do is I go to Window. You can do Show Layer Panel to the right, Show Color and Tool to the right. So show layer and panel to the right. When you click on that, it'll move your layer panel to the right. If you want both of them to the right, you can click on both of them. If you want your color swatch to the to the right and your layer panel to the left, you can do that. So it's a window. Everything there is under window, but I like to keep it with my color picker to the left and my window to the right because that's how it is in Photoshop and I like to keep it kind of the same and this is just what I'm used to but you can do whatever you want. And also if you want to have two views, like you kind of have a second view over here in your navigator of your painting. You can drag these little blue bars and resize parts of the window. You can drag this one here, make that smaller, make that bigger. Um, over here, I think you can only drag this one so it shows more of your brushes. But this can be kind of like a second view, um, but sometimes you want the space for your layers. So if you want another view, go to View, New, 
And now you have two windows down here, and to see them both popping out, click on this little thing up here. And that pops out both your windows, so you can move them around. You can make one, you can put them at different zoom levels. So one can be just for previewing, so go up here and slide down the zoom. That's your preview window to see your work from a distance, because it's really good to look at your painting from a distance. And here's your working window where you can actually draw in, and as you can see, it appears over there as you go. It always appears a little bit delayed. Once you lift your pen, it shows what you just did, at least for me anyway. Another thing I wanted to talk about, now that you have your workstation all set up, you have your little window here to see your work from a distance, and your little window here that you can zoom in as much as you like, draw on, and it doesn't affect the other window. I love this feature. Once I uh, figured out how to do this, I think I had to Google it a lot, I figured it out, and it has been life-changing. Over here you have your color pickers. So you can see I have this one out, but there's also different windows you can show. So I might have to zoom in for this. My screen is so small, so I'm sorry that it... well. The icons, everything's really small on my screen because it has a high resolution. So I'm going to just open all of them. So these are these all do different things and you can click to tab to show these. So this is kind of like a little swatch place where you can put colors, you can save colors. I always forget that this exists, it's so useful. You can put whatever color you want there and you can save your colors. I'm going to turn that one off. This is um, color swatches and you just right click and press set and whatever color you are on will go into that box so you can save colors, right click on the box, set. It's pretty useful and thank you to everyone in my previous tutorial who told me how to do this because I couldn't figure it out. I'm gonna turn that off and this, what is this? Oh yeah, I remember what this one is now. You can kind of fill one color on this side, one color on this side and you can get a gradient between the two, which is really cool. Turn that one off. This one is just like your, it's just, it's just another way to pick colors. So you can pick the hue up here, um, the saturation and the, and the lightness, brightness. So this one makes it go up and down. This one makes it go side to side. And this one makes it go around the ring. I'm gonna turn that one off. And this gives you, does it give you like opposite colors? I'm not exactly sure what this one does. R, RGB, it's your RGB slider. So yeah, so the top one makes it more red, less red, more green, less green, more blue, less blue. That's how that works. And it has like the values here too. So you can like find specific values for the colors. I don't really use that one, but it might be useful to you if that's what you like. I just have this, this ring and sometimes this swatch thing open, but I always forget that exists. So I never really use it anyway. Okay, I wanna show you the tools up here. So I'm just gonna draw something in here so you can see. So here's a little doodle so that you can see what I'm talking about. So these little things up here, these zoom in, zoom out, you press the square to return it. So say I'm zoomed way in, press the square and it goes back to 100% zoom level. These rotate it back and forth as you work, press a little square to put it back to normal. And this flips your canvas, flips it back and forth. And it only flips the window that you're on so your other window doesn't flip it. It's not permanently, Flipping it, it's just you're viewing it reversed. So if you save this image like this, it will save flipped the other way. So it remains like this, but you're just viewing it flipped, mirrored. And your stabilizer is up here that I talked about before. So your brushes are over here. And there's a bunch of tools up here. I'll just tell you what they all do. This is the rectangular selection, the lasso selection. So you can select whatever shape you want. The magic wand, it selects um, certain areas. You can tell it to select by color difference transparency or co by color difference or transparency so there's strict or fuzzy transparency strict works really well for line art it's like more precise but fuzzy is less precise i'm assuming and this slider here is a threshold of what it will select so this um, allows for more things to be in the selection and this allows for less so if i select it like that at zero there's a lot of white area around that but if i turn it up or maybe i should do transparency if i turn it up then it selects a lot more and you kind of have to find a balance until it selects what you want it to. This moves things around, moves objects around. This zooms in, zooms in, zooms out. You can tap to zoom out and drag to zoom in. You can kind of um, configure those, those settings down here, down here. Um, this one, what does this do? This rotates your canvas. I never really use this, but if you like to use that, you can do it. And this um, moves around what you're looking at which is so useful, but I never use this and I really should. And if you ever wanna make something have a shortcut key, just double click on it and you can set it to be whatever key you want. Say I put that as Q, 
Then um, if I'm on my, my brush, I press Q, takes me to this. I can press B to go back to my brush. You can make them have whatever key you want. You can customize all those shortcuts. And if you want to, so yeah, your brushes are down here. This little thing on the, uh, say you're on red and you drew a bunch of stuff in red and you want to use this brush as an eraser, you click on this transparency thing and then it uses your brush as an eraser, which is cool because then you can put textures on your brush eraser. And just remember to uncheck that. These are all your tools. The pen gives you nice sharp lines. The airbrush gives you little soft lines. The brush um, is good for painting. There's a lot of settings you can configure on all of these. I'll get to that. The watercolor, it kind of blends stuff and you can also draw with it. It's really interesting. See, I'm like smearing things, but also drawing with it. It's really cool. The marker kind of does that too, but it doesn't really blend. It's just very um, transparent and it kind of takes colors with it too. The brush does that too, depending on your settings. The eraser erases. Selection pen, you can actually paint your selection in. And then when you go to a different tool, you can see your selection is there. Select erase, so say you have your selection. Select erase, erases your selection. The bucket fills things, of course. The legacy pen is, um, it's like you have pixels, so let me just zoom in really far. So the legacy pen draws with pixels, as you can see, like this. If you want to erase with the pixels, click on that little thing up here. And then you can erase pixels. That, that's a good tool for pixel art if you are interested in that. And what next? This is just another brush that I made. This is like a freckle brush. Um, I don't know if I'm going to talk about brush textures in this video. I think that'll be that'll make it a little bit too long. But let me know if you want me to do that in another future video. And these are some other random brushes that, like, I don't know what, I feel like every time I install Paint Tool Sai, it comes with different brushes. So... This is canvas, acrylic, paper, acrylic, crayon. The blur tool blurs things. It blurs them. Just don't, be careful not to overuse this tool. It can make things look a little bit weird if you over blur them, but it's useful for, for a lot of things. But you can do whatever you want. Like that's just a, that's just what helps me. <laughs> if you like the blur tool, then use the blur tool. And if you want to, so I'm just gonna talk about the brush setting. So this, this is a brush that I use to paint with. I'll tell you my setting for it. This is my brush and I turn down the, the blending and the dilution and the persistence and I pretty much just use it like that. But um, if you up the blending, then it tends to like take colors with it. So you can play with that. The brush, wow, I really should use the blending more. So see how I, I'm on red, but if you color over blue, it takes the blue with it, kind of like a real paintbrush. So I like to keep that down to zero. The dilution, um, I'm not exactly sure what that does. It like. It seems like it's diluting the color as it goes. So like you drag on the color and as you go away, it gets lighter and you can't really get it to go dark until you color a whole bunch of times on it. So it seems like it, it takes color with it. Oh, if I have the blending up, it'll take colors with it, but then it kind of makes it pale as you go away. And the persistence, I think, is just like how strongly these settings are in effect or like maybe it has to do with the opacity or something like that. But you kind of get a feel for what each setting does when you play with it, but the blending can be useful if you're trying to blend. Literally blending, because it takes colors with it and it mixes colors together. If you want to save, go to File, Save As. So layers, I want to talk about layers, and I'm sorry it's so small, my, my screen just makes everything so small. So, make a new layer, you click this. Delete a layer, you press this. Um, erase what's on the current layer, you press this, and that makes everything go away. Um, new folder, click on the folder and you can drag things into the folder like this and then you can close the folder. This is a really good way to organize your layers. Double click on your layers to name them. Double click on your folder to name it. I suggest name your layers, but who really does? I don't name my layers. I'm too lazy for that. It, I just, it's because I never have access to a keyboard. I just don't name my layers. It makes things so much easier though. If you're patient enough, try naming your layers. It helps keep things really organized. Something else I wanted to talk about is something that I get questions about a lot too on videos. So say I drew a heart. Look at this nice heart. I'm going to use the pen tool for this because it's sharper than the brush tool. So say I drew a heart. This is one of my favorite colors. 
I used to love purple, but I love this color. Say I drew this heart and I wanted to add some shading to the heart. I wanted to add a little highlight. I would make a new layer and click clipping. And basically what clipping does, it makes the layer on top only show up on what you've drawn on the layer that you're clipping it to. If I did a bunch of green like this, and if you unclip the layer, you can see everything that you drew. But once you press clip, whatever um, you drew above that layer, it will only show up on what's on the layer below. And another way to do this is to go to that actual layer that you wanted to color on and click preserve opacity. And then you can't color outside of whatever's on that layer. And um, you can like, I like to do this when I'm, when I'm shading stuff. So I like to shade on like the same layer. I find it easier to blend stuff together that way. And this is how you can keep everything on that layer. And if you unpreserve opacity, it just stays the way it is. And then you can draw outside of it again. But if you press preserve opacity and you erase, it makes it white. I'll show you what I mean. So let's put dark background. See that? So it's on preserve opacity and you're erasing it, but it, it just makes it white. It doesn't actually, if you want to actually erase it, you have to uncheck preserve opacity and then you can erase. So that's my little explanation about layers. Another cool thing you can do is um, you can make, see this paint effect thing? You can go to texture and you can make the layer have a texture or go to effect and fringe. And you can kind of increase the width. And what that does is it kind of outlines it kind of outlines your brush strokes like this, which is really cool. You can increase the thickness or decrease the thickness of the outline. I think fringe is a pretty cool coloring technique, so you can play around with that if you want to. And I wanted to talk about layer masks, but I have, I barely use them and I feel like I'm going to give you the wrong information, but you can use layer masks. They're right here. So if you draw something in the layer and you want to mask it, then Maybe you have to like select that layer first and press mask. I don't know. I find it kind of hard to figure out. So I'm not going to talk about that. That's a little bit more advanced anyway. This is supposed to be your the basics that you need to know. Also, there's layer modes, which I will tell you about. They all do different things. And honestly, the best way to figure out what they do is to just experiment. So I'm going to make a clipping group and go to a yellow color and color half the heart. Maybe I'll use the airbrush. And then as you change the layer modes, multiply makes it darker. Screen makes it lighter and it's not really as saturated. Overlay kind of, it can like lighten things and it kind of gives them like a different, overlay is pretty cool to like help you experiment with the color. It kind of lightens things and gives it more of like a, like a pop, like a saturation. Luminosity makes it shine. You can turn down. Oh yeah, if you want to lower a, a layer's opacity, just go like this and it makes it invisible or 100% opaque. Shade makes it darker, but it's a little bit more saturated than multiply. And Lumion shade takes light colors, makes them really bright and takes dark colors and makes them really dark. And they have it has a little bit more color. Oh, and then there's also binary color, but I honestly never use it. It's so weird. It just makes things like black, I guess. I don't really know how to describe binary color. It, it makes it white and then as you make it yellow green i don't really know how to describe this but it's it's interesting <laughs> you can experiment that on your own time there's also a line work layer which is right here this is the line work layer and basically you're working with um vector type lines so you can make lines like this you can make perfect straight lines and double click to end the line and then you go to edit and you can move around the points you might want to have it on translate down here all these do different things to the points translate Helps you move the points around like this. Oh, the eyedropper tool is right click, which I definitely recommend you to use because when you right click for the eyedropper, it takes you back to your brush. So I, I click for eyedropper, I get this in between color and it immediately puts me back at my brush after I let go of right clicking. So I just make my tablet pen button be the right click and you can, you can color pick as you paint. So if you're a painter and you like to pick colors from your canvas as you go, that is really helpful. Another thing I wanted to talk about with the brushes is the brush hardness. You can also color it with, with multiply, which makes things darker. You can color your brush with deep. I don't really know what these do. I never use them. Vivid makes colors more vivid. I don't really, but I usually just keep it on normal. I just, it's easier that way. Just keep this, this thing on normal, unless you want to play with these more advanced settings. And this, 
these right here make your brush um, hard to soft so this gives it more of a soft outline to this to this to this it goes from more fuzzy edge to a more hard edge and this can be useful for the airbrush because the airbrush is super soft and if you put it on the hardest one it's kind of an interesting airbrush so if your airbrush isn't looking very soft it's probably because it's not on the softest one which is the roundest one here that's the softest setting for the airbrush. And one more thing, I want to talk about the textures that it comes with. I have more textures installed. If you want to know how to do that, there's a lot of tutorials online. It just involves copying files into your paint tool side directory. I might do a video about that in the future, but that'll make this video too long. But it should come with spread, spread and noise, bristle, flat bristle. It should come with all those. And I love flat bristle. It's um, kind of like a paintbrush and your your texture settings here they're right here so you can make it um thicker thinner bristles to thicker bristles there's spread which kind of looks all blotchy there's spread and noise which is has noise as well as spread um bristle and flat bristle and then there's also textures you can have a paper texture you can kind of see that and you can have a canvas texture if you can see that and one last thing that I wanted to say is I would recommend getting Paint Tool Side 2. Um, it's on their website. I'm going to link Paint Tool Side's website in the description. Paint Tool Side 2 is better than Paint Tool Side 1. Paint Tool Side 2 is still in the preview version. It's, it's, it's fully available to use and I use it all the time because it has text tools and has just a lot of features that it should have. You, you can move around multiple layers at once, which you can't do in the original Paint Tool Side. I'm pretty sure you, you can't like select more than one layer and move them around. I just don't think, I don't think that's possible. But in the new Paint Tool Side, Paint Tool Side 2, I'll show you here. This is Paint Tool Side 2. It just has more tools. It has um, gradients, it has text tools, shape tools, has perspective tools, there's rulers. It's a lot better than Paint Tool Side 1, but I'm assuming most people are using um, Side 1. So that's what this tutorial was about. But um, Paint Tool Side 2 has all the same features and just a little bit more. It's not completely finished. I have had um, a file corrupt on it before, but I think that might have been my computer's fault. I'm not quite sure because my recording file corrupted and my, my drawing file corrupted at the same time. So it's not completely finished, just keep that in mind, but I use it all the time and I haven't really had problems. So I would recommend giving it a try. It's on their website. Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about up here, um, there's a bunch of windows. They're kind of self-explanatory. A lot of the stuff up here you can just do on the program itself. But, oh, another thing too, if you have a folder of layers and you want to make it, you want to merge them all together, press this button here. It makes everything that was in the folder one whole layer. And if you want to merge layers down, you press that and it merges them together. Merging layers basically means you take what's on the one layer, you take what's on the other layer, and it puts them together the way they appear. So if one's on top of the other, It'll merge them together and then they become one image. You can also transfer down from one layer. So it takes what's on that layer, moves it down, and the layer you were on is now um, blank. And I want to talk about this filter, hue and saturation, because you can change the hue of things. The saturation. There's also brightness and contrast too. So the brightness makes it brighter all the way to white and dark all the way to black. The contrast makes it have more contrast, less contrast. So I was just editing the video and I realized I forgot to talk about something that that's kind of important that I wanted to mention, um, which is selection source. So say you have your layer and it's line art. My line art is a really badly drawn circle right now, but you click selection source, it'll turn your layer green. And then if you put a layer beneath it, you can actually like color in your line art. So if you go to your bucket tool, go to selection source, instead of working layer, click selection source. I would do transparency and you can like increase the tolerance or decrease it. The higher the number, the more it will fill in and the less the number, the less it will fill in. But I think I talked about that already and you can just fill it in based on what's already in your line work layer. You can also make your magic wand tool go by selection source as well. This is one of the easiest ways to color in your line art. You just wanna make sure that it doesn't leave behind little white specks around the edge. So I hope you guys found this video helpful about Paint Tool Sai. If you have any questions, please let me know. I would. Um, try my best to answer them. I hope I covered all the basics. I hope this kind of gives you a better idea of how to use the program. If it's brand new, um, I hope it makes more sense. Um, if you have anything about Paint Tool Sci that you want me to cover, 
in the future that I haven't already, um, then please let me know. So I hope you found this, uh, this little tutorial helpful and I'll see you in my next video. Oh,